Welcome to Darren Daily On Demand, your most trusted resource to help you become better every day. Here's your success mentor, Darren Hardy. Most people are terrified at making decisions, both in their work and personal lives. Why? That is what we are going to explore here today and how you can stop procrastinating and start making great decisions fast. There are three psychological factors behind procrastination in decision-making. Number one is existential anxiety. Making a choice equals loss. Stanford psychologist Irv Yalom writes that major decisions can bring up existential anxiety. We feel this way because choices are like a mini death, where we lose a possibility or what our lives or work could have become with the other choice not taken. This sensation is uncomfortable as it confronts us with the limitations of our existence and the irreversible nature of some decisions. This leads us to procrastinate and avoid making the decision. And to not make a decision feels safer. The mind doesn't have to face an immediate death. All possibilities still exist, or so someone thinks. But we know better, right? A non-decision is a decision, and possibilities still die. Just, you don't get to choose which ones. That is not a good decision. And that leads us to number two, fear of regret. We fear making a wrong decision, one that we might later regret. This fear causes us to delay making decisions in the attempt to avoid this possibility of remorse, which oddly to me is often more psychologically distressing to people than the consequences of the decision itself. Number three, analysis paralysis. The more options we have, the slower we are to make a decision. We suffer paralysis by analysis. And with number one, the existential threat, and number two, the fear of regret hanging over you during this analysis, we become completely paralyzed. We don't fight or flee, we simply freeze. From an evolutionary standpoint, this makes sense. Our ancestors faced life or death decisions regularly. The cautious approach to decision-making could have been a survival mechanism. Quick, impulsive decisions in a dangerous environment could lead to fatal outcomes. So a tendency to delay and thoroughly consider your options could have been advantageous. But the opposite is true in our modern times. The pace of change has sped up radically. The demand to adapt to these changes has sped up radically. Your rate of decision-making needs to speed up with it and radically. The biggest block that we have with making decisions is our a set of mental distortions that we have. So let's walk through several of these mental distortions and how you can break them. You do that by challenging these distortions and reframing your thoughts. Number one, catastrophizing. Here's an example. If this new product launch fails, it will ruin our company's reputation and lead to our downfall. Here's how you challenge it. Ask, what evidence Do I have that a single product failure will ruin the entire company? Then reframe it. While a product launch is significant, our company's success is not solely dependent on this one event. We've overcome challenges before and can learn from any outcome. Number two, overgeneralization. Here's an example. Our last marketing campaign didn't meet expectations. I'm just not good at marketing. Here's how you challenge it. Separate the belief that one event defines overall ability. Does this one less successful campaign truly mean I'm bad at marketing or are there other factors to consider? Then reframe it. Not every campaign will be a hit and that's okay. Each experience is an opportunity to learn and to improve. And the third thought distortion is black and white thinking. Here's an example. If I don't work 14 hour days, I'm not doing enough to make my business successful. Here's how you challenge it. Consider the validity of extreme thinking. Is it really true that success only comes from extreme work hours? Are there examples? of successful leaders who maintain a balanced approach. And then reframe it. Quality of work often trumps quantity and taking care of my well-being is crucial for our long-term success. And then number four, jumping to conclusions. Here's an example. The client didn't immediately respond to the proposal. They probably didn't like it and won't accept it. Challenge it. Question the certainty of the conclusion. Do I have definitive evidence that the client's delayed response is negative? Could there be other reasons for the delay? And then reframe. It's natural for clients to take time to consider proposals. Their delayed response could be due to a variety of reasons. Number five, labeling. The example is, I made a mistake in the financial forecast. I'm a terrible leader. 
Challenging, differentiate between actions and identity. Does making a mistake in one area of my job define my entire identity and capability as a leader? And then reframe. Everyone makes mistakes. It's an integral part of growth. Actively challenging your distortions and reframing your thoughts not only enhances your decision-making abilities, but it also contributes to a healthier personal well-being. So to incorporate these into your life, here are a few questions that you can use to reflect in times of indecision. What's the hardest part about the choice you're facing now? By saying yes to either option, what would you be saying no to? When you imagine each option, how do you feel in your body? You see, you are more intuitive than you think or allow yourself to believe. Your body knows, trust it. If no one ever knew what you chose, what would you prefer? If you were more willing to experience fear and uncertainty, what might you do? You see, with practice, you can learn to make great decisions fast and free yourself from the cycle of indecision for good. In this high stakes world, this skill can be the difference between success and stagnation. So what is one decision you are faced with and what is your newly inspired bold decision? 